we have a House Democrat, according to Fox here, faced a bit of a backlash for being dismissive of testimony up on, at the House's Homeland Security Committee hearing on left-wing violence. Before we get into this, I, I do just want to remind everyone that the two biggest places, the two biggest areas of attack on uh, Donald Trump specifically, but really on Republicans now more generally because Trump was the Republican president. He's the front runner right now for the Republican primary. The two biggest areas they attack us on are um, election denial and, you know, election violence or, or violence related to politics, right? Political violence, and election denial. And isn't it interesting that they do this with all of us supposed to forget about the fact that they, as we know from the Durham report, denied the 2016 election and, and tried to overturn it, effectively tried to kick Donald Trump out of office and even lock him up in prison if they could based on lies because they didn't like 2016. And they went with it for years. It wasn't just a one-off. It wasn't some people who got a little you know, overzealous or whatever. No, no. It was the entire Democrat machine denying 2016. And the other area, and these all tie together, January 6th. They talk about January 6th constantly, the threat to our democracy, all this stuff. I lived through, I don't know, I don't know, Clay, how bad it got in Nashville because it was so present everywhere. There were there were some I remember in 2020 as there was the night of the purge in New York City and they had Antifa lunatics in the name of BLM running all over the city, just smashing windows, looting, taking things. It happened on my block. I was watching as this stuff was unfolding. I could hear all the sirens. The NYPD was totally unable to deal with the mass, the thousands of people running around acting like maniacs. Those were all Biden voters. And the people who gathered outside the White House when Trump was president and had to be cleared with tear gas right in, uh, what is it, Lafayette Square? Those are all Biden voters. The people who tried to burn down a courthouse in Port, uh, Portland, Oregon, and were shining lasers in the eyes of officers in the hopes of blinding them didn't work but they were trying to those were biden voters we're supposed to ignore all of this political violence and that is why i think it's worth everybody um it's worth us taking a moment here to look at this hearing and what julio rosas was up against first of all you have representative but, but how bad did it get in nashville clay was it yeah they they i mean i remember memorial day weekend 2020 they tried to burn down the Nashville courthouse. For people out there who remember, this was uh, iconic footage because Nashville was a city that had never had any kind of rioting uh, to speak of. And I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing on television. They were breaking out windows, throwing basically Molotov cocktails into the Nashville courthouse, trying to burn down the entire building. Uh, in the midst of a BLM protest. There were no officers to be seen anywhere. Now, thankfully, the fire didn't take and really uh, bring down the building, but it was awful. And and I, I remember watching that footage, Buck, and being so furious and angry that in my hometown, we had allowed rioters to try to burn down a courthouse, and there was, at that time, zero consequences for them. So, yeah, in my, in, in my own town, too, it was now it was not New York City. It was not Chicago. It was not some of the cities that had, you know, weeks and weeks of aggressive rooting, uh, liot, <laughs> rioting and looting. But it was it was something I've never seen before and I hope to never see again. And the only time that they can talk about right wing political violence in a mob setting is, is always January 6th. For Democrats, that's just like Tuesday. I mean, they yes. don't care. They will have and have had. There were BLM riots, the 1.0 BLM, if you will, under the Obama administration when they had that truly famous or infamous moment of it's a mostly peaceful protest <laughs> and they had the, the building on fire yeah. behind them, right? I mean, this, is, this also goes to the media knows its role. The role is not to tell the truth. The role of the contemporary Democrat media is to tell you while a looting mob is burning your house down, that your house is not actually on fire. And if you think it is, like, maybe you're a bad person, a misogynist, xenophobic, a racist, you know, your house is not actually burning down, even though you're watching it burn down. They also had that great Don Lemon clip. Do you remember where oh, Lemon yeah. was at the party? He was like, uh, there's a smell of weed, obviously. <laughs> Do you remember? That, that was like... The <laughs> 
I, again, Don Lemon, yeah. before he became like the anti-Trump zealot, had some moments on CNN where you were like, okay, it's hard not to laugh. Like, uh, he's, I think, a pretty talented television guy, you know, regardless of what you think of his politics. But when he said, there's the smell of weed obviously uh was absolutely hysterical I, maybe we could grab that clip somewhere yeah. because they buried it obviously when he became the anti-trump <laughs> zealot but that one in his it is remember the we played that recently but when he got fired i think um we played the uh the don lemon like with lessons for black people remember that he aired yeah. on cnn which was like by the way would get him fired immediately in today's twitter but a lot of what he said was totally reasonable back in the day so, so Julio Rosas, bringing this back to what happened on the House last night, just, just we wanted to remind you all, they lie constantly about the, there's an omnipresent threat of political violence from the left. We all know this. There's a shooting involving law enforcement or even just a white guy who is the one doing the shooting and, or, or, or is doing the, the, you know, the physical confrontation of any kind. There may be a riot. We all know this. There may be a riot, and it will be Biden voters. It will be Biden voters who riot. It will be Biden voters in Portland. It will be Biden voters in Houston. It will be Biden voters in New York City. We all know it, but we're not supposed to. There's like a there's a, a prohibition on noticing that is going on. You're not allowed to notice this. It's like a war on noticing. Here is Representative Goldman. Julio has been at countless of these Antifa uh, you know, actions, direct action, they call it. It's not really a protest because they're trying to break stuff and intimidate people. Here is how this new Democrat billionaire trust fund baby member of Congress speaks to Julio Rosas, a frontline reporter and former Marine, by the way. Play it. Get us, uh, gaslight us up here as if Antifa, which Mr. Rosas, apparently the expert now in organized terrorist activity, has overruled the FBI director who says, there's a headline, says Antifa is an ideology, not an organization. No, no, no. Let's not listen to the FBI director. Let's listen to, sorry, what's your, your title? Senior writer at Town Hall, who is going to tell us that the FBI director is wrong. And I'd like to yes. introduce, there's no question. First of all, it's an opinion, it's analysis. Second of all, the FBI director is not a very smart guy. There's plenty of that going on these days. We've seen it. And third of all, the dripping condescension here from a guy who he's a billionaire he's the heir oh actually you know what let's let julio say because julio is feisty he took some shots play it thing that uh, one of my colleagues said about you a little while ago i'd like to give you time to go ahead and do that yeah thank you congressman well i, I think it's funny to be to be lectured by an heir to the levi strauss uh, corporation and, and that, honestly that's probably why he uh doesn't consider property damage to be that big of a deal because not only does he have that but he also has uh, what some would describe an impossibly good stock portfolio. Taking some shots there. And I, I think he gets at an important point, though. You've got a lib trust fund billionaire. Didn't make it himself. A lib trust yep. fund billionaire who's, oh, what's the big deal if Antifa destroys a store window or, you know, burns down a CVS or a drugstore somewhere? It's not that big a deal. Because, you know, worrying about property, Clay, is for the peasants when you're a billionaire. That's this guy's attitude. And there was so much that was wrong with it. He basically bought his con uh, congressional seat. Yeah, and again, he's a good example of somebody who just accepts the conventional wisdom. Maybe he's smart enough to know the conventional wisdom is wrong.